friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany, where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video, I'm going to be recommending to you some shorter works in the romance genre. <music> So I got a request from one of you guys in the comments asking if I could recommend some of my favorite short stories, anthologies, novellas, etc. for people who like to read shorter works and I thought you know what that's a really great idea. I don't think that's something I've done much of and so I started compiling a list and realized man I actually read a lot of things in those categories and have a lot to recommend. So you're going to be getting a couple of different videos from me giving you my recommendations. In today's video we're going to be talking specifically about romance. This video might be useful for people who want to kind of dip their their toes into romance or try out new authors or new subgenres that they haven't before because it's pretty short, it's pretty quick, it's not a big time commitment and reading a novella or reading a short story collection can be a nice way to kind of dip your toes in the water and see what works for you and what doesn't. This also could be really great for people who are already romance readers but maybe don't always have the time to pick up a full-length novel or sometimes just want something quick as a palette cleanser in between longer works. All of those are valid reasons to want to read romance novellas and short stories and there's a lot of great ones out there. So I'm gonna give you a list of ones that I recommend. I will say several of these are holiday romances. We get a lot of holiday romance novellas and short stories but not all of them are. There are quite a number of them that are not related to the holidays but just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Okay so I do not have these arranged in any particular order. I just kind of like wrote them down as I saw them and thought of them but before I dive into the more specific titles one general thing that I would suggest if you want to read shorter works is maybe try out Harlequin category romances. These are kind of on the brink between being a novella and a short novel but a lot of them are like 200 pages long which is not very long so if you're looking for shorter works some of them are really great. These are a couple I have that I really enjoyed. The Amish Teacher's Dilemma by Patricia Davids if you don't want a lot of steam in your romance or if you're just looking for something really sweet. She writes great characters. I'm not, it's not, I'm not like usually a reader of Amish romances but everything I've read from Patricia Davids has been really great and really sweet so this is one I enjoyed. And then JC Lee has some really good and ones in the Harlequin Desire line. Off Limits Attraction is one I read recently and both of these books are right around 200 pages. Some of the special edition category romances are a little bit longer, more like 250 pages but they're still usually under 300 but yeah a lot of these are like 200 pages long so if you're looking for a shorter work um, check them out. I think these tend to get written off because they've existed for so long but there's actually a lot of very very good ones if you're a romance reader. All right moving on from that let's just go through this list again it's not in any particular order. You are gonna see a lot of my personal favorite authors show up multiple times just because that's what I read. There, I'm sure there are other things out there but this is things that I have read and enjoyed. One thing that I read this year and really liked is a novella bind up. This is called Duke I'd Like to F and it's a very steamy historical novella bind up with five novellas all in one by Sierra Simone, Joanna Shoup, Eva Lee, Nicola Davidson, and Adriana Herrera. Like I said, they are definitely on the steamier side, but I really liked them. I think they're good novellas. They've got an interesting genre mix. If you want to hear more specifics, I would recommend checking out my Goodreads review where I get into what are the tropes that they include. But I really enjoyed this. So if you want steamier romance novellas, you can get five in one. While we're talking about Adriana Herrera, let's just cover her two other short holiday romances that she released this year. There were two of them. One is more of a actual novella and one of them I would call more of a novelette or like not much longer than a short story. The longer one is American Christmas which is a spin-off from her American Dreamers series. I think the series is American Dreamers but um, this is a really great holiday male male romance that is a retelling of the gifts of the magi. If you're familiar with that story it's like a classic Christmas story. It follows two guys who have been living together and it's their first Christmas together and they want everything to be perfect but things maybe don't go as perfectly as they wanted them to. I thought this was really really great and very like you know very much about community and Christmas spirit and I loved it a whole lot. Then if you want something that's much shorter and super steamy <laughs> we have 
Her Night with Santa. This basically imagines what if the current Santa was a butch lesbian named Chris who has a thing for red lipstick and winged eyeliner. Um, it, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but this was very spicy and very short and like fun. So if you're looking for a spicier holiday short romance, that might be one to check out. Then for mystery lovers or people who like interesting twists and turns, I would recommend checking out The Headmaster by Tiffany Rice. This is one that I can't say too much about because you really don't want to spoil anything going in, but this was so good and so interesting and I just found this to be like really really satisfying. What I can tell you is it follows a woman who is looking for a fresh start in life and ends up taking a job at this mysterious all boys academy and has slowly has a relationship develop with the headmaster of the academy. I won't say more than that but this one is like definitely twisty and interesting and like romance mixed with mystery. Uh, yeah this was really good. Then of course I can't suggest short romance without talking about Alyssa Cole because she practically has them in every subgenre that you might be interested in. If you like sci-fi romance you might want to check out The AI Who Loved Me which is available through Audible or via ebook. If you like contemporary romance she has two novellas in the Reluctant Royal series, Once Ghosted Twice Shy which is a female female romance and Can't Escape Love which is a nerdy romance with a disabled heroine and an autistic hero. These are great. They're diverse. I loved both of them. Then if you want historicals, she has a whole bunch of these. I own three of them. We've got Agnes Moore's Wild Night. This one is more of a short story, but it's medieval. Be Not Afraid takes place during the American Revolution. Let It Shine takes place during the Civil Rights period. And then I know she has one that's also set in like the 1920s. I haven't read that one yet. And in general, I really love Alyssa Cole. I think her books are great. They're smart. They're also kind of a good place to start if you want to dip your toes into romance because she's heavier on thematic content than some other authors are. I think you can't really go wrong with Alyssa Cole and she sort of has something for everyone. Let's talk about some more historical romances. Most of these are holiday romances if I'm being honest. Like there's a lot of holiday <laughs> romance novellas but I think they're fun any time of year. One that I thought was very funny was The Earl's Christmas Pearl by Megan Frampton. This is a take on Home Alone but make it Regency romance and I thought it was super funny. The hero is very grumpy but he has a cute small dog that he has to walk and the heroine is really excited that she's been accidentally left alone in their London townhouse over the holidays until she realizes like oh there's no food in the house and I don't really know how to cook and maybe I don't know how to make a fire this could be a problem I might need some help. I thought this was really funny, really charming, definitely worth a read. Then if you've heard people talking about Tessa Dare and you want to get a taste for what she does, this past Christmas she put out a very fun, very funny holiday short story called When She Was Naughty and I loved this. It is short and sweet and very entertaining and I think it's a great example of what Tessa Dare does. She writes historical romantic comedies and this one is playing on the ugly Christmas sweater trope in kind of an entertaining way. If you want to dip your toes into Tessa Dare this would be a good place to start. And then lastly for historicals I of course have to mention Courtney Milan because I love Courtney Milan and while she does write full-length novels she also has some novellas. Both of these are part of the Brothers Sinister series. We have A Kiss for Midwinter which is a of course holiday romance novella that's very sex positive. The hero is a doctor instead of a duke so if you're looking for like different hero types that's great. And then The Governess Affair is another really good one that I loved a lot. So I think if you're looking to try out Courtney Milan and get a feel for what she does these could be a good place to start. She writes more progressive romances that have a lot of interesting thematic content to them. She writes heroines with more feminist sensibilities but also I think great heroes who are strong without being controlling or alpha males. Um, so I'm a big fan of Courtney Wan and I think these are a good option if you're looking for something on the shorter side. Okay so I have three more holiday novellas that are contemporary and then one kind of more out there 
speculative pick. Um, okay, first up, Talia Hibber is one of my favorite romance authors. I think she's great and also a good place to start if you're newer to romance. And she has two holiday novellas that I think are great. The first one is Mary Inkmas. This one came out a few years ago. The hero is a tattoo artist. It's also kind of dealing with homelessness, which I think is cool. I like that she includes a lot of diversity in her romances and social justice themes in some of them. And this one is short and steamy and fun. But the one that I really, really loved came out this year. It was a Kobo exclusive and that is Wrapped Up in You. I loved this so much. It's probably the least steamy thing I've ever read from her, but it has so much emotion, like all the feelings and the angst, and I loved it so much. And what was great about it for me is it has a super grumpy, prickly heroine who has lots of walls up because she's been hurt in the past. Her and her childhood best friend have secretly had crushes on each other for years, but now they're stuck together during the holidays at her grandma's house and things happen. I loved this one a whole lot. So if you're looking to try out Talia Hibbert, those would be a couple places to start. And then my last recommendation is really generally for an author, if you want something that's a little more out there, this is a, maybe a good place to ease into it because it's less wild than some of her other books. But this is The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this actually and it's made me want to read more from Ruby Dixon. She writes the Ice Planet Barbarian series which is kind of wild with these like giant blue aliens and, and whatever but her stuff is fun because it's steamy but it's like very campy and over the top and doesn't take itself too seriously and I think that tone really works with the stuff she's doing. So um, if you want to give her a try, this one is not too long, it's a novella, might be a good place to start. Hey guys, editing Bethany here. I realized I forgot one. Uh, the one other that I would recommend is another holiday novella. This is called Wrapped by Rebecca Weatherspoon and I really enjoyed it. This is people who were former co-workers, secretly had a thing for each other, but it, the timing was never right. But now they're getting together over the holidays. And the other great thing about this one is it has a plus size heroine who owns a bakery and it's super body positive. There's also a lot of like holiday desserts that they eat together that will make you quite hungry. Plus it's super steamy. So if you're looking to try Rebecca Weatherspoon, this might be a good place to start. Okay, so there you go. I don't know exactly how many recommendations that was. I guess I'll count it when I'm editing this, but it was a lot. So hopefully this is useful for some of you who either want shorter works to read or want a way of dipping your toes in the romance genre. Hopefully this gives you some new things to check out. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about today. And for question of the day, give me a recommendation of a romance novella that you've read recently and really loved. Let me know your recommendations in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.